Hello, good evening to you all. Uh, Sri Lanka Association for Child Development is here with you again today to discuss about the early detection of cerebral palsy. For that, today, Dr. Gamun Heva Vitarana, consultant pediatric neurologist, is joining with us. Dr. Gamun Heva Vitarana is a consultant pediatric neuro neurologist who is currently working at Teaching Hospital Karapitiya. Not only that, he has a special interest on cerebral palsy and also he has been working on uh, cerebral palsy, diagnosing and treating with children with cerebral palsy for four years. Uh, so now let's listen to the uh, webinar on early detection of cerebral palsy. If you have any queries on this topic, uh, please write them on the comment section. We will discuss them finally. Now let's join with our consultant pediatric neurologist, Dr. Gamunu Heva Vitarana. Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the another webinar organized by Sri Lanka Association for Child Development. Today we are going to discuss about early detection of cerebral palsy. First, I would like to start with some case scenarios. The first case, so one year and six month old boy who was born 32 weeks, ultrasound born, uh, brain was normal. Then I uh, evaluation didn't show any evidence of retinopathy of prematurity. Hearing assessment not done. He was regularly followed up at Well Baby Clinic. The mother's main concern about this child not walking. Then every time the clinician reassure this uh, child, the developmental delay because of he was born preterm. No any intervention done until age of one and a half years. Always answers, wait and see. The second case, the eight month old, the term uh, delivered that emergency section due to the cord prolapse, he had the birth asphyxia, neonatal convulsion and neonatal sepsis. Again, the ultrasound brain was normal, no hearing or visual assessment. Again, they regularly followed up. And the answer for the mother's question regarding the developmental delay, wait and see. Again, no intervention at all until age of eight months. Obviously, you can see this child with uh, microcephaly and spastic quadriplegic cerebral palsy. This is a 10 month old child. The, the second trimester, they had admitted hospital the possi possible pregnant abortion and also she had uh, pregnancy into hypertension no other perinatal risk factors the parents main concern about less involvement in all in right hand the mother first noticed when child start grasping around four months of age the answer was again wait and see at six months the mother was reassured because child they mainly involve the left hand because child's with we come to a left-handed child. This child again in the right-sided hemorrhage cerebral palsy detected at age of around 10 months. This is the fourth case. Now this child one year and 12 month uh, at the very uh, low birth weight birth weight was 1.8 kilo, the IUGR. He had uh, symptomatic neonatal hypoglycemia, presented at around one year with the developmental delay. The MRI that time showed evidence of periventricular leukomalacia. This child having uh, spastic dialpagic cerebral palsy and also in addition to that, cortical visual impairment. No intervention until one year failed. Again, the answer, wait and see. Okay. 
as a clinician if you get the high risk baby the birth asphyxia or neonatal sepsis meningitis or <clears throat> preterm then how would you reassure the parents if mother is worried about whether this child's normal development whether it's imp uh, getting impaired or whether any risk for having cerebral palsy or any other uh, developmental disorders then how would you answer this question and what are the examination you are doing and what are the investigation you are doing and when you have to do intervention then my talk uh, to discuss about this area all of you are aware as a result of improving perinatal care increased survival of infant at risk for learn term morbidities the although neonatal mortality was dramatically improved with this uh, new technology uh, the perinatal care but unfortunately the morbidities is getting increased out of that the motor developmental delay the main cause of motor developmental delay is cerebral palsy they are higher risk for visual problems hearing problems and the behavioral problems like autism and cognitive impairment therefore it is very important to early identification of this neurosensory problem in this high in high risk category because appropriate early intervention can improve quality of life significantly there are lot of evidence to say uh, the early identification and intervention is uh, dramatically improve the quality of life because of the human brain the early part having the high synapse density plasticity and sensitive period then the early intervention definitely improve the outcome the early intervention what do you mean it's active motor intervention parent education environment recommend it's a multi modality uh, site of intervention when you have to do intervention early as possible early intervention need to start at soon after birth for all newborn at risk for developmental problem you don't need to wait until detect early you can initiate early early routine intervention but after detection this the high risk category the special problem you have to do intensive specific intervention there no need to wait until detection for the developmental problem therefore don't wait and see and you have to start early intervention early as possible if a very within 6 month of age who are these high risk neonates then different uh, institute and different protocol to categorize this high risk neonates but generally the preterm less than 35 weeks low birth weight less than 1.8 kilos small for gestational age perinatal asphyxia or hie the new terminology include the neonatal encephalopathy not only hypoxic encephalopathy all the neonatal encephalopathies the baby is ventilated more than 24 hours the metabolic problems especially the symptomatic hypoglycemia also hypocalcemia seizures infection not only meningitis even the culture positive septicemia even without meningitis the uh, category can categorize in the high risk neonates shock is required inotrope support major morbidities like chronic lung disease intraventricular hemorrhage periventricular leukomalacia newborn with stroke infants born to hiv positive mothers twin with intrauterine death of co twin or twin to twin transfusion hyperbilirubinemia or needed exchange transfusion or that level uh, neonates have major malformations where the inborn errors of metabolism genetic disorders or the antenatal risk factors including congenital infection diabetes hypertension or significant family history of the developmental disorders or any other abnormal neurological examination at discharge or 
the clinician or neonatologist suspect this child having possible uh, developmental delay is all we have taken as a high risk neonates. How you can detect early? The history is important, the neonatal examination, you can do the primitive reflexes. There are some uh, uh, more concise assessment like Hammersmith neonatal neurological assessment. Investigations, the blood investigations, maybe neuroimaging, ultrasound, brain or MRI, IN uh, visual screening, hearing screening, general moment assessment, and Hammersmith infant neurological assessment. My talk mainly concentrated on Cellator 2, that's a general moment assessment, and Hammersmith infant neurological assessment. However, I will touch very, very quickly the the initial the other assessment also for the completion history as i mentioned earlier the diabetes hypertension pregnancy uh sorry hypertension and the family history and the birth asphyxia the infection so on the neonatal examination is very important observations most important you have to observe the child selected comfort the uh, quiet area the remove the uh, clothes as much as possible and you can detect most of the abnormalities for example the some uh, defects like the like cleft palate or cleft lip this type of things can be associated with midline defects leading to developmental delay and the syndromes and the neurocutaneous abnormalities like tuberous sclerosis uh, or stage syndrome neurofibromatosis then better to see the level of alertness if it is baby is slow sleepy it may be underlying neonatal encephalopathy or some other metabolic disorders the quality of crying also important if it is high pitch cry it may be due to cerebral irritation if it is low pitch cry maybe due to underlying neuromuscular problem then you have to check the response to stimuli, response to tactile stimulation, sound as well as light, whether it is appropriate or not. Then you can observe the cranial nerves, whether it's a facial nerve palsy or any evidence of the Horner syndrome. The posture, again, very important. You can see this, uh, the normal posture, the flex position. But the abnormal frog like position indicate hypotonia, maybe due to underlying developmental disorders, maybe underlying neuromuscular problem, or even uh, the cerebral palsy, sometimes initially you get the hypotonia. Then you can uh, observe the child's uh, limb movement with this symmetry and the quality of movement. I'm going to discuss later the more detail about this movement. But you can detect the abnormal posture, like uh, the herbs palsy or clump, okay? like the uh, results of uh, brachial flex injury. The neonatal behavior is important. The normal behavior, you show the, the neonates alert, then the sucking reflex, moving around, and the moving all four limbs. And the same time, you can see the response for the uh, sound and the light as well as uh, tactile stimulation then the second video uh, this is the abnormal behavior you can see the child's the lethargic and the very diminished limb movement and the inappropriate response for the visual tactile and the auditory response Then you have to measure the head circumference. It's a microcephaly, the significantly associated with developmental disorders, and there is hydrocephalus. The spine for the spina bifida or limb abnormalities may indicate subtle spina bifida leading to uh, limb deformity. The visions, it's a response to light and fixing and follow on and reflex. 
Then the primitive reflexes, as you know, is the brain stem mediated reflexes. It is very important to detect the primitive reflexes. The abnormal primitive reflexes may be absent, weak, abnormal, asymmetry, and persistent. Then the <coughs> more comprehensive neurological examination, sometimes available. And the blood investigations, the thyroid screening, if it is, uh, and the metabolic screening. At the moment, in the Sri Lanka, we don't have the global metabolic screening, but at least the high uh, risk babies, for example, is the born the consanguineous parents or family history of uh, metabolic problems. Then uh, you can arrange the metabolic screening. Then hearing screening and the visual screening. Thus, I mentioned those things actually not only to detect cerebral palsy, but generally what you can do to detect developmental disorders. Right. Then, what's about the ultrasound? <laughs> then you can see this uh, ultrasound, the bilateral periventricular leukomalacia, especially in the uh, preterm babies. The ultrasound appearance periventricular leukomalacia highly suggestive of developing cerebral palsy. But sometimes an in initial periventricular hyper echogenicity later might be uh, resolved completely. The otherwise, uh, the, the radiological appearance, periventricular hyper is there, but the child development may be normal. Then the ventricular dilatation, the unilateral ventricular dilatation, so suggestive of possible hemiplegic cerebral palsy. Then this uh, ultrasound, you can see again the hyper echogenicity uh, due to intracerebral hemorrhage. Again, it's maybe due to preterm children. Then the ventricular dilatation, bilateral, the underlying hydrocephalus. Then ultrasound, the sensitivity and specificity to detect cerebral palsy around 74%. There are 20 one fourth of children with the ultrasound abnormality having normal development. Okay. Then what's about the MRI and CT? The MRI you can see this uh, poor and separate cyst. There's higher risk to develop uh, hemiplegic cerebral palsy. This child having license separately, having the neuromigration disorders, obviously very, very higher risk to develop significant developmental delay. The hydrocephalus and the, again the periventricular leukomalacia. If you do MRI, appropriate age, the high risk group, up to 100%, 86 to 100% sensitivity to detect cerebral palsy. But the specificity is relatively low, it's a 86%. But the practical problem, the, all the high risk categories, we can't arrange. Uh, we can't uh, do MRI bay because of the availability and the limited resource and the as well as time. <clears throat> then now I am going to discuss about this uh, general moment assessment. Uh, general moment assessment we can uh, use to detect cerebral palsy from birth to five months of age. The hind, which is a Hammersmith infant neonatal examination, sorry, Hammersmith infant neurological examination, we can use after two months, preferably after three months. This is the systemic review uh, published in uh, 2013. They have mentioned the sensitivity and specificity to uh, predict early detection of the cerebral palsy. As I mentioned in my earlier slide, you can clearly see the cranial nerve ultrasound around 74% sensitivity and specificity. If you do neurological examination, the proper neurological examination, 88% sensitivity. The MRI brain, up to 100% sensitivity, but relatively low specificity. If you do general moment assessment, the 98% sensitivity as well as specificity. Therefore, general moment assessment has the best evidence to predict accuracy 
accurately diagnose cerebral palsy very early life the general movement is the you can see the most trusted scientific method to diagnose cerebral palsy in newborn is qualitative assessment of general movements this professor hans pitel uh, who discovered this general movement and he published uh, his uh, the accuracy and reliability to assess Uh, to detect cerebral palsy by qualitative assessment of general movement in preterm term and young infant he has published uh, his uh, first observation in 1997 in lancet since then up to now there are so many more than 100 uh, publications showing the validity of the cerebral palsy early detection all of the this results showing more than 95% sensitivity as well as specificity to detect accurately to detect cerebral palsy in very young age there are some researchers general movement to detect other developmental disorders other than cerebral palsy including autistic spectrum disorders in born errors of metabolism pet syndrome down syndrome borderline intelligence and minor neurological dysfunctions when we consider in the movements when we consider in the newborns they can get lot of movements including hiccups myoclonus jittery startle atnr in this age the writhing movements are the general movements what we consider uh going to the young infant for example around 3 months again there are so many movements you can see the axial rolling manipulation voluntary movement reaching touching grasping anti gravity movement the fidgety movements are the general movements we are considering this stage to detect cerebral palsy <coughs> the general movements are spontaneous body movements appear early fetal life around 8 weeks of gestational age the fetus and lasting up to 5 month postnatally this is spontaneous movement presumably initiate from central pattern generator thought is due to the in the central gray matter the brain stem reticular activating system that area there are two types of general movement the writhing movement and fidgety movements the writhing movement usually you can see since birth to up to 2 months and the fidgety movements you can see from 2 months to 5 months this is the graphical illustration the general movements the writhing movement the initially early fetal life lasting up to around 1 to 2 month the fidgety movement is starting around 1 to 2 months and lasting up to 5 month postnatally this is the gestational age weeks you can see there are overlapping period around 1 to 2 month generally we avoid when you are assessing uh, this period 1 to 2 month period because it's the overlapping of general movement both writhing and fidgety this uh, age group uh, sometimes very difficult to assess uh, this general movement qualitatively what do we mean by writhing movement i earlier mentioned it start early gestational age this writhing movement are gross elliptical spontaneous movement involving whole body is last usually few second to several minutes sometimes maybe longer this writhing movement are variable in terms of speed and amplitude it sequence arm leg trunk move movement it's flow all over the body so warm like movement so wax and vein intensity force and speed 
the writhing movement usually is a gradual end and the gradually uh, sorry gradually beginning and gradually end these movements are very complex because of the they can get the extension flexion movement as well as rotation movement it's a three dimensional movement not a unidimensional then it's getting more complexity it is not haphazardly occur only the limbs it's involving whole body and it's giving the flow whole body which goes fluent right then you can see this uh, newborn this general movements the writhing movement involving whole body the upper limbs lower limbs trunk head neck right it's having variable speed and variable amplitude it is multi directional movement if you see this one joint it's a three dimensional getting complexity this normal general movement should be variable in terms of speed they are not a monotonic the amplitude they have the large amplitude and a small amplitude amplitude should be vary it should be complex complex mean it is three dimensional the flexion extension rotation and it should be fluent this means need to be flow in only whole of the body it's gradual onset and gradual ending let's concentrate these features and see this video is a normal riding movement you can see this movement involving whole body it's a multi directional movement if you concentrate the hip joint the flexion extension the rotation the movement giving rise to complexity the speed wise the variable speed and the amplitude the different amplitude as they are not a monotonic movements it's involving whole body that's mean fluent it's a gradual end and a gradual uh, start thing and gradual end okay this is the normal ride movement right then i am going to show another two video the pre term and term again normal ride movement so 34 week in the pre term the ride movement when compare the term is a gross movement little bit large amplitude sometimes maybe abrupt onset when compared to the term and the speed also little bit fast but still we have that three quality what i did mention earlier variability complexity and fluency just see so 34 week you can see various amplitude movement multi direction this mean the variability you can see this shoulder joint the, the different type uh, different direction of the movement flexion extension you know here rotation you rise to complexity and it's in all whole body and the flow th flowing through the whole body skull getting fluency this is a term child again the same three quality variability complexity and fluency involving whole body very nice flow is there so variable variable speed as well as 
एम्पलीट्यूड एंड कॉम्प्लेक्स ओके देन व्हेन वी कॉल इस एब्नॉर्मल राइडी मोमेंट द एब्नॉर्मल इफ इट इस नो वेरिएबिलिटी इफ नो कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी इफ नो फ्लुएंसी वी कॉल एब्नॉर्मल जनरल मोमेंट there are three main types of abnormal riding movement poor appetite cramp synchronized and chaotic this video is a term baby can see abnormal riding movement so poor appetite you can see riding movement but it's monotonous no flow no complexity you can't see that so usually the one direction movement you can't see the rotational movement and less variability less fluency and less complexity that is poor repetition if you detect this type of movement so higher is around 50% risk to develop cerebral palsy right again i will show you another baby with the poor appetite this is starting this is a general moment this is a rising moment the less flow this means less fluency no variability so monotonous the moment no complexity at all this is poor appetite if you detect this type of general moment then you can predict this child having cerebral palsy around 50% then cramp synchronize the cramp synchronize is more uh can predict more than 95% predictivity to develop cerebral palsy the cramp synchronized mean then the you can't see typical uh, quality of the movement but i did mention earlier complexity variability and fluency in the whole body moving as a one part that's concern rate low limbs you can see the whole area moving as a one part so stiffness you can see is a child stiff no variability this concern right here is so moving as a one unit this is a cramp synchronize this is very very high predictivity of cerebral palsy if it is get the cramp synchronize right i'll show you again this two video so you earlier the same time so normal riding moment and abnormal riding moment then you can see the difference just concentrate about the three factors what i did mention complexity fluency and variable this one Seven, all three characters. So normal riding. This son having uh, abnormal riding moments, poor appetite. Okay. Now. we are going to next uh, type of general moment that is fidgety moment fidgety moments uh, around occurred usually around 8 weeks of first term and can last up to 20 weeks or oh, 5 month uh, post gestational age but the ideal time to detect uh, or monitor assess the uh, fidgety movement around 3 months 
Then Fugetti movements are circular movement of small amplitude and moderate speed and variable acceleration involving neck, trunk, limbs in all direction. So variable ampl small amplitude, circulatory like movement, mainly involving the joints you can see and the neck, trunk and limbs, the all direction, right? They are continuing in the awake period. As you are aware, the, the age of around 15 weeks post term, infants develop other pattern of spontaneous motor activity such as manipulation, voluntary movement, reaching, touching, grasping, axial rolling, and anti gravity movement. When you need to assess this fidgety movement, you have to ignore all the other movement. You have to concentrate only on fidgety movement. Just concentrate this form, uh, video. You can see the hand manipulations movement, the lip anti gravity movement, but don't concentrate on that. Just concentrate over this circular movement. You can see the wrist, the neck, even the ankle. You can see this small amplitude circulatory type of movement that is fidgety movement. I will show you again. Can you see this oscillatory type of movement? Mainly in all variable acceleration, neck, trunk, and limb. Right? Actually, you need train to detect this movement, uh, but I'm just giving uh, idea what sort of movement we are looking. When you call abnormal fidgety movement. There are two types of abnormal fidgety movement. One is the absent fidgety movement. If you can't see fidgety movement between 9 to 16 weeks post term, then we can consider as a absent fidgety movement. If it is absent fidgety movement, it's very, very high risk to develop cerebral palsy. More than 95% higher risk to develop cerebral palsy. The another type of uh, Abnormal fidgety movement, we call abnormal fidgety movement. This is a range of exaggerated type of fidgety movement. This video recorded at three months, the absent fidgety movement. You can see this child lot of movement, anti gravity movements, some type of rolling like movement, but you can't see the, this circular fidgety movement, the oscillatory type of movement. The new movements are there. Right? Then this child definitely develop cerebral palsy. It is the absent fidgety movement. Right. Then I will show two video together. Sorry. Yeah. It's a normal fidgety movement. You can see mainly concentrate about this wrist, neck, this small oscillatory movements. You can see the fidgety movement. Then this one, the second video, although you can see the movement, you can't see fidgety movements. Right? You can see some type of anti gravity movements. But fidgety movements are not there. In this child, we can reassure no risk to develop cerebral palsy. By this one, more than 95% risk to develop cerebral palsy. And I'll show you another video again together this is a previous video with the fidgety movements normal fidgety movement this one is abnormal fidget, sorry absent fidgety movement it's having the manipulation movements also but you can't see fidgety movement it's very high risk to develop cerebral palsy right this both video recorded uh, at three months of age Right. 
then summarize what i have mentioned is general moments the early the riding moment riding moments may be normal or riding moments may be abnormal there are three type of abnormal riding moment or appetite cramp synchronized and chaotic if it is cramp synchronized very very high risk to develop cerebral palsy then fidgety moments again may be normal or absent or abnormal if it is fidgety moment absent again very high risk to develop cerebral palsy right if it is fidgety moment normal then the neurodevelopment outcome in this time of cerebral palsy is so normal but uh, if it is absent fidgety then higher chance to become a cerebral palsy at of age of two years traditionally we are diagnosed cerebral palsy at around two years by this method at age of five months we can confidently diagnose cerebral palsy right and initiate intensive specific early intervention right this is the predictivity of the cerebral palsy uh, the described by in 1999 in the this uh, pinkish area you can see the cramp synchronized if it is cramp synchronized in the early neonatal period then most of those end up with absent fidgety around three months and at the age of two years they will become a cerebral palsy while this yellow you can see the poor appetite the poor appetite the half around 50 percent become a normal fidgety and with the normal outcome the another half become absent fidgety and end up with cerebral palsy okay right <clears throat> Now, how we can assess this uh, general movement? You have to take standard video, usually three to five minutes video recording. The child should be in supine position with minimum clothes. Then she should be active or wakeful. You have to avoid first few days of the birth, preferably first day. And uh, you can't take video, child and crying or prolonged hiccup. You have to avoid stimulation, the acoustic stimulation, tactile stimulation. Better to avoid colorful blankets and other stimulatory modalities like a toys. Is the you can see the how to take video. You can use the specific. Uh, phone uh, sorry uh, camera or you can use your own uh, mobile phone but need to keep mind about the confidentiality of the data and you can fix the uh, camera and take video okay is the correct method this is the wrong method you can see a lot of people around child stimulating there are toys and the uh, colorful blanket then this type of uh, video we are not recommended if you take this type of uh, poor quality video the analysis is very very difficult and the outcome uh, the uh, results uh, we can't say uh, accurately predictivity of the cerebral palsy then how would you analyze the video we have to analyze this video blindly okay, without any clinical details. When you look in the video, we only know about child's gestational age. That's all. To decide what we are looking with a friding or fidgety video. We don't know any clinical details. Right? Then usually it should be assessed by certified assessor or trained assessor. But can uh, evaluate as a team in our center usually we are doing as a team but independently the two times we have to run the same video and the uh, second time we have to assess independently then after that 
we can uh, discuss if it is not getting the same final uh, evaluation then we can decide uh, we can discuss and get the uh, result right this general movement training is the authorized body is a general movement thrust this uh, thrust general movement thrust conducting the international training courses and giving a certified as a general movement assessor right that's about the general movement the next few minutes i'm going to very very briefly uh, describe about the another tool to detect uh, cerebral palsy the early life that is the hammersmith infant neurological examination or hind there are a lot of evidence the accuracy and the reliability to early detection of the uh, cerebral palsy using hind it is hammersmith infant neurological examination the simple scorable standardized clinical neurological examination assist in early detection diagnosis as well as prognosis of infant at risk of developing cerebral palsy the hind can be used in infant age between 2 to 24 months of age then the predictivity there are uh, various uh, uh, literature can see the different type of predictivity but uh, generally if it is high in a score less than 57 at three months 96 percent predictivity of the cerebral palsy the hind has good sensitivity and high predictive value for risk of cerebral palsy in high risk population under five months this is scorable neurological examination consists of 26 items under five domains high knees easily performed and accessible to all clinicians but definitely we need the training it will not take much time if it is uh, we can do definitely within 10 minutes after training uh, these are the uh, scales usually uh, they have in this score the each item the zero to three and it's include the uh, assessment of the cranial nerve function assessment of the posture and assessment of the movement and assessment of the tone and assessment of reflexes and reaction ultimately we can score each section and the uh, global scores the maximum 78 and uh, then according to this global marks and the age when we are doing the high we can predict the cerebral palsy the 90 percent predictivity of cerebral palsy the height the uh, if you don't between 2 to 24 month then high in score if it is less than 73 indicate high risk of cerebral palsy if you're doing after six months if it is less than 40 it's indicate definitely in the cerebral palsy uh, and the poor uh, outcome that's mean the gmfcs level one to two usually sorry gmfc level uh, three to five if it is less than 40 uh, high -nest score this is the review article uh, recently published in 2017 with the recommendation for the uh, early detection of cerebral palsy and i want to highlight this uh, so below five months of age they have strongly recommend general movement to detect cerebral palsy with the 95 to 98 percent predictivity of the cerebral palsy also they have recommended uh, mri brain with the 80 to 90 percent predictive of cerebral palsy but as i mentioned earlier doing mri is very very difficult in especially in the resource poor settings like us 
uh, we can do MRI only for limited uh, proportions because of the unavailability as well as time consume and the cost. Then also they strongly recommend uh, high in score at three months to uh, evaluate the, as a uh, detection tool for cerebral palsy. Okay. Then finally, I will show on the clear scenario. It's a 34 week with the risk factor as the neonatal meningitis and neonatal hypoglycemia. It's born the 34 weeks. The first video you have done, 39 weeks, it's a writhing movement. The writhing video, you can see it's a cramp synchronized, no variability, no complexity. And no fluency, you can see whole body moving as a one unit with some stiffening appearance. Okay. Can you see? Then with this video, we can strongly suspect this child having cerebral palsy at the age of 39 weeks. And we have started intensive specific uh, rehabilitation in only multidisciplinary team at the age of 39 weeks. Then we have done a repeat video, the fidgety video at three months of age. You can't see any fidgety movement, all those limb movements are there. Again, you can see this specificity, lower limbs. Okay, again, the further confirm, our previous prediction again we can confirm this child having higher risk to develop cerebral palsy and we have done uh, we can project this uh, scores uh, like this here you can see the 39 weeks cramp synchronized and the 12 months the fidgety moment absent fidgety it's going this direction then the high end we have done the same child at age of five months you can see global score 57, right? Then the GM1 showing at 39 weeks, cramp synchronized, highly suggestive of cerebral palsy. At age of three months, general moment two, that the fidgety, the absent fidgety, again highly suggestive of cerebral palsy. At the five month, high in 57, again highly suggestive of cerebral palsy. Then at the age of five months, we can confirm the diagnosis of cerebral palsy. Actually, no need to wait until five months. The first time we can, at the uh, just before the term age, we can detect the cerebral palsy. This child I can I have seen uh, recently, few days back. Now child is four years, seven spastic quadriplegic cerebral palsy with GMFCS score around three months. You can walk with the uh, support then further confirm our early detection now is four years but we have detected this one in at the age of 39 week okay right let me summarize the early detection pathway what we are doing when we are getting a lot of high risk infants the referred from the various neonatal units, including neonatal encephalopathies, preterms, neonatal meningitis, so on. The all the high risk categories we are starting early intervention, the, the initiation of referral. Then first we are doing general moment assessment one, the writhing period at discharge from the neonatal unit. Before going home, the neonatal unit, we have to do, we are doing a uh, first video, the writhing. Then according to the result of this video, if it is normal, we are continuing standard early intervention. We have started here. If it is abnormal, we are starting intensive early intervention by in only multidisciplinary team for the specific intervention 
then we are doing second general moment assessment around three months of age that is fidgety moment if it is fidgety moment normal again you are continuing with the early intervention that we initiate if it is abnormal intensive intervention involving multidisciplinary team then we are doing hammersmith infant neurological examination around five months of age along with clinical assessment this clinical assessment also important at around five to six months we are doing full clinical assessment apart from these three assessment general moment one two and hind the clinical assessment involving basically child's development as well as the other examination for example the uh, head circumference like with all the things if it is everything normal we are considering the uh, brain imaging if it is done at this say if it is everything normal this is a general writing video normal fidgety video normal hammersmith normal other neurological or general assessment normal then you should be reassure the parents about very very less risk to develop cerebral palsy and we are discharged from the specialized uh, uh, intense, uh, intervention program but need to follow up either well baby clinic or moh with the normal so the routine development assessment okay then if it is abnormal definitely we have can counsel the parents this child having cerebral palsy and continuing specialized intensive rehabilitation program to get the maximum outcome of this child including mdt team thank you very much for the listening uh, if you plan to start your uh, neonatal units this uh, early intervention program uh, with using this uh, standardized evidence based method we are very happy to help you can contact anytime thank you very much Sorry, Dr. Ayati, I couldn't hear anything. I think some problem with the audio. Hello? Hello, I can hear you. Yeah, 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 now, now I can hear. Uh, some problem, I think. Yeah. Excuse me, madam. Uh, we still can't hear you properly, madam. Uh, I think uh, it's better if you take off the headset and talk directly. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, now okay. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah. So sorry about it. <clears throat> yeah, no, um, I first wanted to thank you. For, uh, it's very informative and uh, it's a very standard, high standard lecture that you gave. Thank you very much for that. A lot of things to learn. I learned a lot myself. So I was just asking because I'm sure there will be a lot of clinicians who want to initiate the service in their clinics. Um, uh, I was asking you, um, I mean, how uh, uh, how did you train them? You trained uh, who is taking the video and who is watching the video with you and who is doing the hinds and that that's kind of the practical thing because okay. we all are in busy clinics, so um, yeah. people are yeah. Yeah, actually, the Kaira Pitya uh, initiated this project in 2016. Uh, as you are aware, as a, as a center, we are getting uh, children from the Mahamodara, that's the main uh, maternity hospital, Arthur, like that. Then we are doing basically, for example, the Mahamodara, the usually the neonatal unit, they refer the children. Then the physiotherapist will take the first video from there before discharge. Then they are sending video confidentially to us, and then we are assessing uh, video blindly, as I did mention in my presentation. Then if there are any abnormality, we are taking these children for the intensive therapy for the, our center. Then we initiate intensive therapy, and then we are doing a fidgeting video at three months in the our center. And the hind, uh, again, we are doing in the our center, the Karapitiya, pediatric neurology. The hind uh, doing by the uh, physiotherapist, uh, occupation therapist, and the medical officers. They all train. Uh, that sort of is a multidisciplinary involvement, not a single thing. The assessing video, as you mentioned, then because we are getting a lot of referrals, we can't see all the videos. But uh, practical way, what I am doing, and I have trained uh, uh, therapists as well as medical officers. They are analyzing this video as a group. The group should be at least one physiotherapist, one occupation therapist, and one medical officers. If all are coming to the same conclusion, for example, it's a normal rising or abnormal fidgety like that, then uh, it's gone like that. But if there are any controversial, they are uh, sending to me. Then I am giving the final decision. That sort of thing. Uh, yeah, it is uh, not very practical. Only needs the intention to initiate the uh, then uh, because uh, very very limited staff we are doing because the Mahamodara only one physiotherapist at the moment now it's two physiotherapists we initiated the one physiotherapist so a lot of other works and then we started successfully doing. Very good. Maybe it's easier to have one physiotherapist. I would say. <laughs> aside the exact wording, what it says is um, in Sri Lanka, are there any neurodevelopmental institutions where they can identify early uh, neurodisabilities early? Yeah, I uh, already answered I that our institution. Yeah, I know. Then in, addi in addition to that, I know the Ragam, uh, Professor Raman Malik yeah. team, uh, the IT center is doing. Right. In addition to that, uh, as I, I think the Kaluba will also doing. The, again, the, I need to tell the Family Health Bureau, they initiate this process, process and now they are uh, planning to uh, doing this uh, activity all uh, Sri Lanka. Then uh, at the moment, uh, we are uh, in the process for that. Uh, thank you very much, Kemal, for initiating this actually, uh, because earlier we, uh, and still, we are seeing cerebral palsy uh, as a delayed uh, thing. Uh, many months or years have elapsed. Then when you know the uh, uh, secondary musculoskeletal changes have occurred, it's very difficult to reverse them. Uh, so how is, Cameron, how is the outcome of the cases that you have detected early and intervened early? Mm, definitely, because the evidence are there. If it is uh, not only evidence in our practical, it's so far last four or five years we are seeing 
because now we are not seeing the children uh, as we, when we straining because the cerebral palsy is very uh, stiff and as you mentioned the secondary muscular skeletal problems now very very less we are seeing if it is initiated very very early the minimum uh, those type of complications and uh, uh, we don't have the uh, results but uh, we are in the process for analyze uh, our results and uh, plan to publish later yeah that, that's great news that's that's what we all want to hear and i'm very happy to hear that maybe um dr samanmali uh, also is doing as you said professor samanmali yeah. maybe she also had very similar experience you are still analyzing your data is it so uh, yeah. uh so yeah we will um, see and compare these data from before and after initiating it's very encouraging to see um yeah. thank you yeah Thank you yeah, very actually, much. Actually, yeah, the, cerebr yeah, the cerebral palsy, then mainly what I did the, the cerebral palsy detection, other than cerebral palsy, there are the uh, neurodevelopmental issues. There are tools actually for developing these things. We have to detect those things because the high and uh, general movements mainly for detect cerebral palsy at this group. But there are some institutions they are using for detect other uh, neurosensory problems but mainly for cerebral palsy but other than cerebral palsy there are some other non cerebral palsy developmental disorders like uh, uh, behavioral problems or autism like thing then uh, we have to be in to detect those things also that's right so uh, it's a very broad topic isn't it so just you you just narrowed it down to detecting cerebral palsy i know um yeah, Gamma, yeah. if anybody is willing you are willing to train isn't it so any pediatrician who is willing maybe you can uh, help them out to you know train them to do it isn't it yeah definitely uh, already we yeah. have done uh, that and if uh, anybody willing just contact and uh, we are happy to help yeah thank you very much i have uh, other questions i think in the chat uh, yeah they are actually so there's a question gamono that says can the gns be used as an alternative to mri brain uh according to the current evidence the sensitivity and specificity of the gma around 95% then the mri again the same site of uh, uh, specificity and uh, 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 sensitivity uh, because the now recent recommendation uh, the most of the institution in the high risk uh, settings they are Uh, recommended use mri along with gma but in the uh, resource limited setting like us we can uh, use gma we get can get the same results uh, according to the available data that's right so this is this if, doesn't yeah. cost that's mean if yeah. you if you can can do mri plus gma definitely it's ideal but if you can't do mri it is not practical in our setup to doing mri for the whole at least uh, babies the for only the gma or combine with the gma with the hind we can get almost the same results okay about 98 percent isn't it so yeah. Uh, yeah it's a very very cost effective uh, very cost effective detection yeah. tool put together yes um yeah uh so this is a very interesting discussion and i think uh, the people who do gms might have uh, found your like uh, talk very interesting and informative because i was also doing it not in this organized way uh, but did a lot more clearly and um, uh, thank you so much let me see any other new questions uh, yeah there are a lot of comments lot of comments uh, uh we can use this uh, this is going to be in the stream and this will be uh, we'll be using this uh, for teaching there's no objection from you isn't it so the pediatricians yeah. and teens yes yes thank you so much so we'll wind up this beautiful session uh, thank you very much okay thank you